Hey there friends, Martin here and by now most of you probably already know that I've made this CG Boost Master 3D Environments course into which I've poured literally all of my knowledge about landscape creation in Blender. Every now and then I return to the course and update it with some new nuggets of knowledge or even a completely new chapter breaking down a new environment. Which is exactly what happened with this scene that I made specifically for the latest CG Boost environment video where I share 10 tips on how to improve your landscape creation. However, since this mountain scene combined the techniques I've already explained in the course in several chapters, I decided it's not really worth a new chapter. Instead, I made it into this short video on my own channel. By the way, the course, along with all the other courses at cgboost.com, are now sold with a 30% discount. It is available for a limited time only to celebrate CG Boost founder Zach Reinhardt's birthday. So if you ever considered buying some of our courses, now is probably the best time. Oh, and by the way, happy birthday, Zach. Even though we go over many techniques on how to create terrains from scratch in the course, to speed up the creation of this particular scene, I simply went to CG Trader and bought this wonderful piece of Icelandic landscape generated in World Machine. It really looks amazing even by itself, so half of the work was basically already done for me. After the purchase, I imported the provided FBX and scaled it up significantly to be at least a bit accurate to real world measurement. Anytime you experience a clipping like this, simply fix it here by increasing the clip and value for the viewport. And same goes for the camera. Next up, I created a camera and placed it in my scene. For some camera tips, definitely watch the CG Boost video connected to this breakdown. Once I've decided on an angle, there was this issue of my terrain cutting off, so I decided to manually change it using shape keys. I just added a base shape key and a layer on top of it, modifying it like this. This gives me an option to always return to the original shape if I decided I don't like it. Next up, I jumped into making a material for the mountain, but this said, it already looked great with just the diffuse coloring. I quickly added the Sunrise HDRI that ships with Blender and positioned it in the World Shader Editor to my liking. Usually, when you buy a package like this, you'll find a lot more maps you can use, depending on how much you want to play with it. For example, I plugged this provided water texture into the specular map to ensure that the water surfaces have some reflections and glints. It's subtle, but I think it helped the final result. I even combined it with the snow map to include the snowy areas into the specularity. Then I just added the normal map and was pretty happy with how it looked. To achieve a more dramatic look, I wanted to have some large-scale cloud shadows on the ground. Usually, I simply add a very large plane, put a simple material on it, and plug a noise texture into the alpha socket. You will need to add these coordinate and mapping nodes with Ctrl T, if you have Node Wrangler active, uh, to be able to play with its position. And also, to let the light through some more, this color ramp, where you need to play with the edge points, increasing the contrast like this. Then it's all about balancing the scale and details of your noise texture with its position to achieve a cloud shadow that you like, highlighting the important parts of your scene. You can even key the position node to make the shadows move slightly. I talk about this some more in that 10 tips video that I mentioned, so check it out later. Next up, I started dicing my scene into collections, already preparing it for the layered rendering and compositing of the later stages. I alt D duplicated the mesh twice, putting the two instances in the back here and here, and also making a separate collection for them. At this stage, I wanted to add some sort of atmospheric depth layer into my scene. I usually do it by adding a large volumetric cube or sphere into my scene, and onto it, I add a principled volume like this. And don't be surprised by the very low values you'll need to use in the density. Otherwise, you'll achieve more of a foggy effect. You can raise the anisotropy to 0 0.5. Uh, I feel like it absorbs the light a little bit better. And most importantly, 
I've been experimenting with adding some emission as well. There is a delicate balance between having a low enough density complemented by a bit of emission, but combined like this, I think it makes for a pretty good atmospheric effect. Of course, making it blue helps as well. Those who already saw some of my scene breakdowns probably know that I really like using images for my skies and far background elements. Well, this was no exception. I used this very nice cloudy photo, importing it with a images to planes add-on. I made it very large, placing it into the far background. And then, in the material, I plugged the base color to the emission as well, to ensure the original values of the image are retained, not dependent on the scene's lighting. In the very same way, I added 2D mountain peaks image and placed it in the background in here. Then it was basically just about scattering trees. Fortunately, I purchased the add-on Scatter, which is, I dare say, a must for any environment artist working in Blender. It offers all sorts of beautiful biomes, from small-scale grass assets to large trees, plus external packages from other authors can be purchased. One of those packages is Alpha Trees, offering these amazing 2D particles of various forest types. A mixed variety is the one I used, and you can see, after the scattering process, all of these are already oriented towards the camera, which is pretty important in case of 2D particles, so that you don't see that they're 2D. I scaled my trees down significantly, and then it was mostly about playing with the placement. There are these awesome culling masks in Scatter add-on, which allow you to employ not only vertex groups, but also vertex colors, and even images to drive the placement of your particles. When it comes to vertex colors, Scatter can create some of the more important ones for you. You just make them in this extra section. In my case, I used mostly this elevation, but you can even add slope, curvature and others. This is such a cool feature, by the way, allowing you to quickly create masks usable for all sorts of placement and texturing purposes. In the end, I chose this combination of ash and birch forest for the lower portions of the mountains, and using the elevation map, I cut off the highest parts. I then used some of the images provided from CG Trader package for this specific terrain. And for example, I put this cliff JPEG in here, which allowed me to cut off trees from the steepest slopes. For the foreground, I used another of the alpha trees package with more conifer trees, but those I scattered with normal particle systems using a few hand-painted weight masks. A final layer of detail was these little flying seagulls in here. I got these from CG Trader as well, but you can get some animated birds just as easily from BlendSwap for free. And with this scale, it is really not that important to have a very detailed bird anyway. With all the various elements diced up into collections based on their distance from the camera, I started rendering separate render layers. If you want to get into rendering for compositing in Blender, definitely don't miss this free video of mine at CGBoost channel, which will guide you through the very basics. Personally, I'm used to compositing in Adobe After Effects, so that's what I've used for the final part of the workflow. And here, it was just about layering the various rendered elements on top of each other, playing a little bit with the colors and contrasts, as well as adding some additional effects. In Blender, I activated this mist pass for my mountain layer, and you can easily preview it in here and control its look in the settings sections over here. Increasing the distance to span the whole environment is the key. And then you can simply render it out to a separate image sequence using the compositing render layer node with this socket connected to a file output node. With it, I was able to add a slight layer of atmospheric effect using a simple solid layer with blue color on it. And I plugged it into the mist pass through this LumaMet option here. Final effects I used were this coloring tool called Mojo from Red Giant, which adds a nice filmy coloring tint. I added a vignette, as well as chromatic aberration effect. That one I got from the site Plugin Everything, where you can download it for free. Finally, I added a grain effect, where I fiddled with some settings of intensity and also the application. I usually make the intensity at the bright spots much smaller than the dark spots. That's how film grain often behaves. And that was it! 
All in all, it took me just a day or two to prepare this scene, which is pretty fast compared to the other scenes from my course. Of course, the main thing here was that I got the wonderful mountain model from CG Trader. So yeah, you can see that becoming good at using tools like World Machine, Gaia or World Creator really is a great advantage. Anyway, that's it for today. And again, a quick reminder that all of our courses at CG Boost are now 30% off. So check them out if you want to learn something new about Blender or Substance Painter. Until next time, stay creative my friends, Martin out.